The 3rd century in Rome was a turbulent time. Germanic and Persian incursions, the rise of the Goths and Franks, not to mention the constant strain of usurpers, civil wars, and even the empire breaking up into three states over the course of a decade nearly spelled disaster for the empire. Had it not been for the emperors Aurelian and Diocletian, the empire would have collapsed under its own burgeoning weight. But what if they never came to power? What if the empire followed its death spiral to fruition and actually collapsed? This is the alternate history of Rome, the 3rd century collapse. Our timeline starts in the year 235 AD, where the crisis first started. Just as in our timeline, the legions, led by Maximinus Thrax, rebel against the Severans successfully over the use of bribes towards the invading Germanic tribes in the Rhine frontier. The crisis progresses just as it did on our timeline, with Persians, Goths, and various other tribes invading and causing mayhem in the empire, not to mention the Cyprian and Antonine plagues. However, whether it be due to Rome's competent soldiers such as Aurelian dying early, or just a general failure of administration, Rome begins to collapse. It reaches a crescendo in the years 260 to 270, when the Gallic and Palmyrene empires break off from the Romans. The Romans, in this timeline, are unable to stop the rising tide of its various enemies invading it, so it begins to enter a free fall. However, that doesn't mean that the breakaway states are stable either. In fact, I suspect that they'll face their own set of problems, with the Palmyrene Empire being conquered by the Sassanids and the Germans overrunning the Gallic frontier and perhaps making it to Hispania just as the Suebi did in our timeline in the 5th century. However, I don't think that the Empire will face a total collapse. In particular, I suspect that the more populated provinces, not under the control of the breakaway states such as Greece and Italy, will remain in the hands of the Romanesque government, with Eastern and Western Roman remnant states forming. This is mostly because the Romans had not yet begun the practice of using Germanic tribes as federati at this point, but again, this is highly speculative, so if you have a better explanation, let me know. However, various depopulated provinces, such as Moesia and Pannonia, will fall into the hands of the invading tribes. Thus, by 290 AD, I think the borders could look something like this, with the Sassanids having retaken lands that had been under Persian rule almost 500 years prior, and Germanic tribes running amok in various frontier provinces. Being that they attacked from there, I suspect that the Goths would most likely take Moesia and move west from there, with some others taking over the client kingdom in Crimea. I also suspect that the Basques may take the chance to get independence with all the chaos happening at this point, but again, that is very speculative on my part. As for events after 290, various nomads from Central Asia, such as the Huns and the Hephthalites, will still invade in the 5th century, but due to the 3rd century collapse ultimately resulting in smaller, more centralized states, I suspect that the Germanic kingdoms occupying the former parts of the Roman Empire will handle them at least a bit better than the Romans did in our timeline. As for the Hephthalite invasions, I suspect that the Sassanids will deal with them just as they did in our timeline. However, some of the biggest changes compared to our timeline will be in language and religion. Without a unified Roman Empire to spread it, Christianity wouldn't be able to become the juggernaut that it is today, though minority communities will still exist, especially in urban areas and perhaps other places like Armenia. Paganism will be the dominant form of religion, especially in Gaul and the various Germanic kingdoms in the frontier areas of the former empire. This also means that this timeline will not have Christmas. As for Islam, if it does rise up like it did in our timeline, the Sassanids, without a devastating war between them and the Byzantines, will be able to contain the Arab invaders quite well and keep Zoroastrianism, the dominant religion, in their empire.
In terms of language, Germanic languages will be more widespread than in our timeline, with speakers in places such as modern-day Germany, Moesia, Britannia, and hell, even perhaps Crimea and Hispania. Though, this is highly speculative on my end, especially the Hispania part. Also, according to the Wikipedia article on it, the extinction of the Gaulish language is, quote, estimated to have been in the late 5th or early 6th century AD, and that Gaulish was apparently still widely spoken in the days of the empire, with trilingualism and people struggling for fluency being noted in its early days. If anyone has better sources on this, let me know. Based on these statements, I suspect that the Gallic Empire would ultimately use Gaulish as its lingua franca in this timeline, with it slowly taking on official functions, though with heavy influence from Latin. Of course, Latin dialects will still be spoken in North Africa and Italy, and the Eastern Remnant will ultimately become Greek-speaking like the Byzantines in our timeline. I will ultimately end this timeline here, in 700, because events beyond that point are quite hard to predict outside of the Viking invasions that will inevitably happen. Thanks for watching! If you have better sources on whatever I talked about, please let me know. You can also follow me on Twitter.com, but as always, have a nice day!